title of my presentation, Pixel Perfect, looking at our society and the way that the media distorts what we think is beautiful. So here's some synonyms for the word normal. You have standard, conventional, ordinary. And while many people may try to resist being these words, we all want to fit in in some way. And to fit in, you got to start here. You have to be standard according to somebody. And we feel that need all the time to fit in and be normal. <clears throat> so according to the CDC, this is the average body weight and body type in the media. And either compare it to yourself or compare it to me. doesn't matter. So looking at that, we are a relatively obese country. But looking at women in particular, five foot three, and 164, excuse me, 0.7 pounds. So do we see this in the media? No, not even a little bit. We see a socially desired body type that most women don't even fit. <clears throat> so why do we buy products like this? Why did I buy that bathing suit? It doesn't look like that on me. We buy this because for that brief moment, we want to feel good. We want to think that we are going to look like that in, in that bathing suit. And if I were to buy a boyfriend these boxers, is it because you know they might be comfortable and he might like the way they feel? No, not at all. It's because I might be dating David Beckham for a hot minute. And not to, leave, not to leave you men out of this, but the remainder of this is women, because most of you don't look like that, and it is a shame just as much as it's a shame for women that we don't all look like that. <laughs> so going back to normal, normal gives us acceptance. We have to be normal according to somebody. We want to fit the mold of what is normal. So by fitting the mold, shouldn't that mean that we fit, that we're average? Because these people, they're not average. Is it a shame that they're not average? Yeah. I think everybody can agree. But they're, they're not the mold. Five foot three, 164.7 pounds for a woman is the average, is the mold. So getting a little philosophical for a minute. Abraham Maslow was a psychologist and he talked about the hierarchy of needs. And this theory explains how people go about their own self-interest. And it talks about how we need to fill each of these before we get to the top. So if you think about it, according to your life, physiological, you gotta eat to get to that 164 cent pound. Safety, you gotta feel okay. You gotta be socially accepted. You have to have self-esteem, and then self-actualization is how we actually come to terms with who we are. Am I successful? Am I proud of myself? And so all of these needs are more basic than others. But keeping this in mind, Spirituality versus materiality. We struggle to find normalcy, and it's unfortunate that nowadays we find it more in materiality rather than spirituality. And women in particular categorize self-esteem as a physical feeling of beauty, while personality is also a factor, but beauty overshadows that. <clears throat> this man was, <clears throat> excuse me, a social scientist And he saw the media as reinforcing existing social trends. Uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Existing social trends were not those two models I just showed you. And he thinks that the media strengthens rather than threatens the status quo. Victoria's Secret models and David Beckham aren't the status quo. And we've already said that that is highly unfortunate. But they're, they're not. That doesn't make, this, this is invalid nowadays. Another bathing suit I bought. I don't look like Marissa Miller in it. Maxim Hot 100, number one, some odd years ago. You know, whatever. Limited effects perspective says that the media does not affect us as much as our own opinions do. But where do we get our own opinions? Where do they come from? They come from other people, how they perceive us. And they don't, they don't come from how we feel about ourselves, but how other people see us. You know, when you get home and you, you, when you buy this, are you going to say, yeah, it fits me well? 
you, you, you're going to say that, but your first instinct is going to say, yeah, it fits me well. I look all right, but I don't look like her. <clears throat> Selective exposure was another theory that I found very relevant, that we choose what we're going to be exposed to. And is, is that really true at all? We are constantly bombarded with advertisements, bus stops, subway walls, magazine content is highly advertised now. There's billboards everywhere. And it's all subliminal messaging. And you may not be able to read this entirely, but it says, let's pretend it's an ad for swimwear. And the bottom says, persistently plastic. <clears throat> Another theory was cognitive consistency. That we consciously and unconsciously work to preserve our existing views. And our cognitive brain applies to processes of perception, judgment, and reason. Now, the existing views. Well, the existing views of most women are, I don't look like that, which often leads to, I'm not good enough. Since, I mean, I don't understand why this is beautiful at all, but just like Haley pointed out, Marilyn Monroe, size 10, speculation. But when did the standards for beauty change to this? If she was, if this woman was walking around during the time of Marilyn Monroe, they would have thought something was seriously wrong with her. Well, we all think something's seriously wrong with her. Now, the key focus of my research in my paper was the Dove Self-Esteem Fund and what this company is doing to try and challenge beauty stereotypes. So I'm sure many of you have seen this uh, billboard up before. And the Dove Real Beauty campaign invited women to widen the definition of beauty. And they wanted beauty to be a source of confidence rather than a source of anxiety. So they polled 3,200 women, each 18 to 64. Now, keeping in mind that this survey and this whole thing started in 2004, um, but today I think it's still very relevant and the numbers have changed, but positively the numbers have changed. Now, their global report started by polling women around the world about their self-esteem. So describing yourself using one word, natural, average, attractive, only 2% said beautiful. 44% of Americans don't feel comfortable describing themselves as beautiful. Now, to draw an indisputable correlation between these women's responses and the media is, is nearly impossible. But it's disappointing, nonetheless, that 44% of Americans, uh, I don't know if I would call myself that. <clears throat> uh, Doves, another phase of their Real Beauty campaign, had these billboards asking onlookers what they thought about real people, unedited. They asked these people to consider the positives about these women rather than pointing out something that society would normally deem as negative. Wrinkled or wonderful, extra large or extra sexy. And on, door, or on the bottom over here, it says, join the beauty debate. <clears throat> A lot of Dove's um, initial attempts targeted older women and like the need that we don't, we don't really want to age and we resist it. Um, this ad reads, too many age spots to be in an anti-aging ad, but this isn't an anti-aging ad, this is pro-age. It says there's a new line of skincare from Dove, beauty has no age limit. And now, as Haley showed you, the evolution video was, is really powerful. That's, that's frightening. And she was, you know, after being airbrushed, makeup, photographed, and photoshopped, that was very, very powerful. <clears throat> Now, this is, this is really what it all comes down to, that 75% of their respondents wanted the media to do a better job of portraying women of diverse physical attractiveness. Diverse physical attractiveness. So they're all attractive, they're just diverse. 